Well, it's definitely winter time, but it's always faggy hi-fi time. Greetings Dolly Birds and Boy Dandies, welcome to Baggy Hi-Fi once again, this YouTube channel devoted to record collecting and the vinyl community here in the UK. Well, it's a new year, it's 2023, Happy New Year to you all. And it's the time of year when we folks in the vinyl community do the vinyl tag for the new year for 2023. So thanks to Rob Walker over in Manchester for setting these 20 questions. We're going to just go straight into answering these questions now. Number one, Rob asks us, show your favourite new album from 2022. And this was, was released in 2022 and it's the Dream Syndicate, uh, most recent album, uh, Ultraviolet, Battle Hymns and True Confessions. Never felt that was a great uh, title, but it's a very, very good album, really a bit of a slow burner. First of all, it just kind of sounds like the rest of Dream Syndicate's uh, Paisley Underground psych type uh, guitar workout albums. But it really is one of their best. It's a real slow burner, very sort of sinuous, mm, slow sound uh, that gets into your veins. So uh, excellent album by uh, the Dream Syndicate. That's my favourite release from 2022 um show a record by the last person you saw live or last band you saw live well i had to sort of think about this have i seen a live album live band this year or live artist this year i really can't remember i know i've been to the cinema i've been to the theater i even went to a panto a couple of weeks ago starring tommy cannon ex of cannon and ball and he was excellent 84 years old and i worked out that the last time I went to a live show by a band or an artist was just before the pandemic began. So it was Julian Cope, February the 14th, 2020 at Newcastle Riverside. And there's one of Julian Cope's albums, Skellington. Yeah, so I really must uh, get out more. Uh, the third album, uh, third question, I should say, um, a band or an artist's first album, which you think is their best that they peaked on their first album. Well, I'm going to show you this one. The Clash's first album, self-titled in 1977. As a teenager, the whole thing, this the rebel revolutionary thing sucked me in, I think. I was just liked all the slogans and stuff uh, stenciled on their outfits. It all seems rather more contrived now though, but Still, this is their most, most focused album, I think, the most uh, punk rock album that they ever made. A uh, bit of a classic if you want to, you know, show a, or listen to an album from 77 by a UK punk band. Um, what's on here? Remote Control, White Riot, Hate and War, uh, Career Opportunities, and they had a drummer at the time called Tory Crimes. It all kind of fits together really well. Doesn't seem quite as um, meaningful now, but um, yeah, still packs a punch. The Clash's first album, their best, I think, because I think they kind of got bogged down. I lost interest really after a few singles after this one. They got sort of, in my opinion, got bogged down in uh, too much bandana wearing and too much uh, cod reggae. Fourth question. Show a hat trick, hopefully a vinyl, uh, album a cd album and a cassette possibly uh three formats of the same record couldn't manage this one i'm afraid rob but um i'm going to show three products uh, of the same album peter hamill's chameleon in the shadow of the night this is a uh, an original from 1973 and for some reason i have another original from 1973 on vinyl again on charisma and i have uh, a cd version of chameleon in the shadow of the night by peter hamill um i have lots of uh duplicates of cd and vinyl of the same album but i don't really have any cassettes i have nothing to play cassettes on fifth question album title which begins and ends with the same letter well an excellent album here 
Blue Oyster Cult's Secret Treaties, starts with an S, ends with an S, one of their great uh, early albums. Um, brilliant lyrics on here, uh, very arcane stuff. Uh, career of Evil, Dominance and Submission, Harvester of Eyes, Flaming Telepaths, Astronomy. Very, very interesting uh, band, Blue Oyster Cult. If you don't know them, I uh, suggest uh, they've made many uh, good records. Very interesting band. Question six, show someone or an artist or a band, uh, sorry, an artist it had to be, didn't it? Born in the same year as myself. Well, I did look this up, 1959 I was born and Robert E. Robert Smith of The Cure was born the same year as me, but I don't have any vinyl albums by The Cure. Uh, Susanna Hoffs of The Bangles was born in the same year as me. But in the end, I plumped for also the geographical connection. I was born in Liverpool and I share the same year of birth as Ian McCulloch of Echo and the Bunnymen. Here's their album, uh, Porcupine. I think that was their third album. So Ian McCulloch, same year, born as myself and born in the same town of Liverpool. Number seven, most listened to album of the year. Well, it's it's only been released in the last month or so, but I've listened to it a, lo a lot in the last few weeks, just before Christmas. And it's um, part of the Ghost Box reissue campaign. They're reissuing some of their early records. I've been a label, English label, which have been going for, uh, I think, 20 years now. So this is Belbury Polly, The Willows, one of their uh, strongest releases. Really fantastic. I, If I'm working, I tend to listen to instrumental music, and this really fits the bill. I'm not saying it's background music, but um, very evocative, very English. Uh, the Willows by Belbury Polly has a quote on the back from the Algernon Blackwood. Uh, spooky story of the same title and a quote from C.S. Lewis as well how more English could you get but uh, The Willows by uh, Belby Polly been on constant uh, spin on my turntable in the last couple of months question eight which artist have you listened to most in 2022 well not an artist that was or a band that were new to me I just sort of re-discovered and re-enjoyed if that's a word um, Hawkwind Particularly that really early stage of Hawkwind, uh, Ladbrook Grove band, uh, invented space rock really. Um, yeah, been listening to their early uh, stuff there. Really enjoyed it. Question nine: Show a record by an Australian band. Well, one of my favourite Australian bands, The Church. This is one of the most jangliest. Uh, heyday. Question 10, a surprising purchase. Now you might be surprised and show me, uh, for me to show you a record by Haircut 100, but I've always had a soft spot for Haircut 100. Uh, Nick Hayward, I think this is the only album they made with Nick Hayward in as their leader. I think they kicked him out, I believe. But um, you'll probably know Favourite Shirts and Love Plus One, which is on this, but Nick Hayward, um, Underrated songwriter, uh, quite quirky. Some uh, tracks I also like on this uh, album, Pelican West, Marine Boy, Lemon Fire Brigade, Milk Film, Snow Girl, Baked Bean, and uh, Calling Captain Autumn, and Fantastic Day is on here as well. Really uh, lovely, catchy, uh, breezy, early 80s pop, and an album that you might be surprised for me to buy or to show. Okay, we're on to question 11 now. An artist you are complete on? Well, I'm not really a completist. I probably have uh, complete runs of albums on CD by artists and bands, but not so much on vinyl. So I've sort of cheated here because I'm going to show the two albums that Sid Barrett released in his lifetime. I know that there are compilations and rarities that have been issued since. But um, anyway, this is the way, the only way I can really answer this question. So uh, first album, Madcap Laughs, nice original on Harvest here. 
that wacko uh, gatefold and the follow up Barrett. So that's my complete run of Sir Barrett albums. Uh, question 12, a great run of three albums, I guess, three albums that were released after each other. Very strong run here from uh, Galaxy 500, a band from uh, Massachusetts, from Cambridge, Massachusetts. Trio, unique sound, very deceptively simple sound, very atmospheric, shimmering sound. Uh, Dean Wareham and others went on to form other bands. I don't think any, anything they ever did was as good as this run of the first three albums by the band Galaxy 500. So that's the first one today. Second one, probably the best of the three, On Fire, Galaxy 500. And the third one, this is our music, Galaxy 500. Fantastic uh, trio of albums there by Fantastic Trio. Question 13, an 80s soundtrack. Well, I don't actually have a soundtrack to an 80s movie, but I do have an album which includes music that was used in an 80s TV series. And this is uh, Julie Cruz, Floating Into the Night. I think Julie Cruz died in 2022 as well, uh, among many others. Uh, yeah, so this is some of these musics, uh, music on here is from uh, David Lynch. TV series Twin Peaks from the 80s. Um, somebody who died in 2022, Gary Brooker of Procol Harum, died in 2022. His uh, their live album uh, in concert with the Lund Edmonton Symphony Orchestra. There's Gary there with his famous moustache. Disappointing purchase in 2022. This one, I'm not saying it's a bad album, but it's not really uh, from the period which I'm most interested in. So it's by the uh, Kraut Rock band Guru Guru. And the album is uh, Tango Fango. By the stage that this was released, um, they've become much more of a sort of tight jazz rock band rather than their sprawling acid guitar workouts of their earlier albums. So not a bad album, but not really what I really enjoy in Guru Guru. Show number 16, question number 16, show a non-vinyl item. So a book springs to mind, the rest is noise. Quite a hefty book written by Alex Ross, listening to the 20th century. Now this is um, about 20th century classical music. Uh, it touches on a lot of avant-garde composers. Really wanted to read this because I would like to listen to more 20th century classical music. I do have some in my collection, but I think I need someone to sort of guide me and give me some more background. So yeah, really enjoyable book. Very accessible, lots of interesting anecdotes about the composers and about the times that they lived in. So that's The Rest is Noise, highly recommended by Alex Ross. 17, question number 17, show an album you consider to be a grail. Well, this isn't one that I was actually searching for, but when I found it in the charity shop, I was knocked out because it's, from, it's a soundtrack to one of my favourite 60s, swing and 60s films, Smashing Time, shown this before. Fantastic find in a charity shop in Ely. Um, music composed and conducted by John Addison. Um, the screenplay was written by one of my heroes, George Melly. So, yes, Smashing Time, fantastic 60s film starring Rita Tushingham and Lynn Redgrave. I consider this a grail. Question number 18, a space-themed record. Well, this is a space-themed band, actually, from the 90s. Man or Astro Man? And a great uh, pastiche sleeve, looks like a 1960s uh, sci-fi paperback. So this album is, uh, what's, what's this one called? Uh, it's called Is It? Or is it called Is It? Anyway, um, groovy label on the Estrus label. And I'll just read you out 
some of the song titles to show you that it really is a space themed record. Um, Invasion of the Dragon Men, uh, Journey to the Stars, Escape Through the Air Vent, Alien Visitors. These were a fun surf style um, band man or astro man. Question number 19. Show a some VCLT or a present, a vinyl album that was given to you as a present. Well, this is a VCLT, a vinyl community love train. Uh, sent to me very kindly from Pete from West Co from Sounds of the West Coast channel. And it's a, a great 70s uh, acid folk, possibly electric folk, folk rock album by Spyro Gyra, Old Booth Wine. Thanks again, Pete, for that lovely uh, VCLT. Final question. 50 years ago, a record from 1973, question number 20. So I thought, we think of 1973 as the uh, height of glam, and this is sort of on the edge of glam, but this is also looking forward to uh, what would be coming later on. This is Brian Eno's first album. At that time, he was just known as Eno. he just left uh, Roxy Music, declared himself a non-musician, which again would become very an influential idea. Um, Here come the Warm Jets, an album of songs. There's none of the really of the ambient music which was to come, but uh, great, great, um, enjoyable album by Eno when he still had hair and when he still wore makeup. So um, yeah, this is the reissue um, from a couple of years ago. So that's it. Thank you once again, Rob, for setting these final tag 2023 questions. Hope everyone is very well. I hope you have a happy and healthy 2023 and I will see you soon. So bye for now.